Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the stream for today. Um, today I'm going to do some blind solving of the Hack AB um, CTF challenge that the uh, uh, Swedish company Knowit has put up. So it's the same company that created this uh, uh, Active Directory uh, CTF challenge that I uh, streamed recently. Uh, this is a little bit different. This is more of a, a big collection of uh, a bunch of different challenges. And I will not be solving all of them today. So uh, I will go on for, for a while. And then uh, uh, I will probably not stream for as long as I usually do. So it would be a, a slightly shorter session. But uh, still, let's, let's see what we can do in that time. If you want to yeah, play along... Or something uh, you can check out this uh, website as well I posted it uh, in the chat I think you should be able to read it in the scroll back and uh, you can add this uh, get parameter event equals CA2 and then you can filter for just the people who are listening to the uh, this uh, stream and uh, yeah so I mean this is in Swedish but it's um, they have made this fictional company hack AB and they have this bug bounty program and we're supposed to like identify vulnerabilities and this is the first page and then there's a scoreboard uh, as well and uh, yeah so let's start and just here it explains just uh, what the flag uh, looks like um, and uh, so they are supposed to be like this, HAB flag, and then stuff. And uh, we can submit this example flag, I guess. So it says that it was accepted. It says that I have one point. So you don't you, you don't get to pick your own username. So uh, I am I, I randomized it a few times until I got something uh, nice. So I am chief debugger. So here in the um, scoreboard we can see that I got one flag um, also by the way uh, throughout this stream uh, please tell me in the chat if you have any questions any suggestions uh, any like different ways of approaching a problem uh, yeah basically anything I, I, I really like to to hear from you to get some uh, uh, interaction we've got a question here uh, how's Bob uh, I think he's doing uh, fine the the whole team has been uh, a little bit um, inactive uh, in the uh, past few uh, weeks or so uh, but uh, he's probably great uh, you would have to ask him and yes yeah, so with that let's uh, go into start looking at this uh, so here is a list of all the flags so they have uh, 32 different uh, challenges and you can see here how many different people have solved them you see they range from i guess fairly easy with like uh, uh 187 solvers to pretty tricky with uh, you know just a handful uh, of solvers um so and there's some some tags here explaining the different uh, categories and stuff and there was a question like, if I'm going to use Ida, then please use Ghidra instead. Thanks. And there's a question or a, a reply then from uh, Matus that uh, I don't think there's much or any uh, reversing or pwning in this one. Yeah, so uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see about that. I mean, I, I won't be doing like anywhere near all of them today anyway. So we'll, we'll start and, and we'll see uh, uh, how it goes. And... Uh, I don't think if I get this set up correctly, it's like it, in contrast to like a regular CTF, it doesn't seem like there's like a specific, um, you know, link or anything to, to any specific challenges. So this is more, I guess, similar to like the OWASP uh, juice shop, if you play that one. So like the flags are just, I guess, scattered uh, all around and you would have to find them. Uh, so I guess this means that my status bar uh, 
isn't really as meaningful as it's us as it usually is. So let's just change it into um, just a general thing like that, and let's start. So I guess we get a little bit of um, clues from the names of these challenges. So first one, uh, uh, the name is. For, oh, I mean, first of all, we got the first challenge. Hello world. Okay, cool. That was just the example flag. Uh, then we have uh, who's your source. So I assume we'll check out uh, the source of the uh, web page and see if we can find like uh, something here. And uh, let me just say this was the um, example flag. We have some CSS style. Uh... Oh, they say the bug bounty is out of out of scope for did I misread this? Let me read. Re oh, right. Okay. So sorry, we need to go to the actual let me just close this down. We need to go to the actual website. Okay, cool. Now we're in the right place. Uh, so this is the, this is just for the scoreboard, and then we start here. Okay, so same idea. Uh, first of all, you know, read instructions properly, which I didn't. Note that the subdomain bugbounty.hackab is not part of the program, so we're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be here. And here, let's check the source. And cool. Here is a flag. So a bit of a easy start. You submit that it was accepted. Uh, that was um, the second uh, flag. Second one is called uh, "Kill All Humans." Uh, so that could suggest something about you know robots. So uh, oh, by the way, I'm gonna start actually um, just very early start bringing up some notes and uh, some keep some notes uh, on uh, what we're doing uh, so uh, I'm just gonna make the font uh, please tell me if the text is not uh, large enough yeah, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger in the browser uh, as well I guess um, and Okay, so first of all, we just have this. This is our main website. Uh, anyway, uh, we had got this first one here. Uh, so I guess we could just uh, note this down. So like uh, flag two is just the source uh, here. And we'll note down the flag as well. And um, so there was some suggestion about running uh, some tools in the background. Um, no, I won't do that. Uh, let's look at this uh, uh, manually. Oh, sorry. Uh, first. So yeah, let's check this uh, humans.txt. And so here is some background description. So it explains that this is like a fictional company and a CTF. Um, and it's designed to do uh, practice some like basic uh, things like information gathering and uh, verification of configuration, some logic and error uh, handling. Um, and there's some parts about uh, authentication, authorization, cryptography. Um, so, and it also says that as far as I know, there are no vulnerabilities related to data validation, like XSS, uh, SQL injection, local file inclusion, remote code execution, and so on. Um, and there are no so-called off-the-shelf uh, software uh, with already known vulnerabilities. So we're not like hunting CVEs uh, here. Uh, so there's no point in using SQL map or public exploit. Some useful tools are like developer tools, 
Curl, Nmap, Nikto, uh, Hydra, that's like password cracking, right? Uh, Burp Suite, Wireshark, Cashcat, Aircrack, and so on. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, created in the beginning of uh, last year by uh, Thomas, who I think was in the chat here and uh, wished me good luck, so thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was the humans.txt. Uh, let's, uh, let's check the uh, robots.txt then. Oh, look, here we have a flag. Uh, so we get this. Uh, and we got that one. Cool. I see that some people are already racing ahead. Um, and this is also, oh, sorry. I, uh, this is also good to know then because the robot uh, file gives us a bunch of uh, interesting uh, paths that we uh, should uh, keep in mind. So let's just copy this into our notes. Uh, actually, let's split this up into like flags where we just keep the the like useful stuff and then uh, the notes where we will keep like all kind of random uh, notes um, okay so for example this uh, sitemap will probably be interesting we see some admin path here there's some indication of like PHP source code so all of this is and like templates so all of this is really interesting um, but uh, let's leave that uh, for a moment and check the hint for the next flag. So it says, uh, check your head. So maybe we should take a look at the headers. So open our developer tools, uh, check our network um, traffic, um, reload the page, uh, and look at what's being transmitted here. Look here. So in this uh, feature policy um, header, we have hmm, uh, another flag. So I can just, if you would use like curl, you could input like a command like this and then just uh, grep for uh, feature policy so let's just pick out that header and uh, that's the flag right so we submit it we got a flag cool um, what's the next one it says uh, Globe Trotter and the category is bus logic. Um, that doesn't really tell me. Oh, okay, so this is maybe where we should bring out the scanners. Um, okay, well, let's do some. Uh, some scanning them. Uh, I guess one basic way we could do this is just to start out with like a basic uh, nmap scan. Um, well, first of all, let's just look up this IP address and just check it's the same for, yeah. Uh, okay, so Oh, the tags are references to the chapters in OWASP testing guide. Bus logic is business logic. All right. Well, let's bring up the uh, OWASP testing guide and keep it as a reference. And 
Okay, uh, I'm not gonna read through 200 pages, uh, you know, on stream. So, but let, let's uh, let's keep this around as a as a good reference. Uh, so, well, we can start these scans in the background. Uh, we can start out by doing just like an end map on the uh, 3000 uh, top ports and because that will cover a whole lot of stuff. Um, and so first of all, let's let's just check this website out a little bit. Like what do we even even have here? Is it a little bit slow? Is it slowed down by the scan? Uh, did I kill the service or did I kill my internet connection? Okay, now it works. Um, okay, so we see a few open ports. Let's uh, let's note this down here. Uh, let's actually check this. Uh, well, first of all, let's just browse around a little bit. So, torch. This is this new uh, add-on challenge, I think. So we'll just leave that for now. And uh, so this is. Um, Some, some news from the uh, company. So here they say that they have this bug bounty program, so we already know about that. And then they say that you get they get the highest score. Um, um, so they did add some kind of uh, security headers and got some uh, positive scanning results and this, looks like the uh, uh what's it called like lighthouse watch house what's it called mozilla is it called um observatory so it's a question here what are you solving uh so i'm just doing this uh general collection of um uh, uh, it, it, this is the fake bug bounty thing. So I don't really know exactly which flag I'm doing, um, you know, in general. And right now I'm just like generally like looking around and seeing what, uh, what's on the website. Uh, so First of all, I'm actually going to check if this is observatory. I remembered it looking something like like that. Let's let's that can scan in the background. We also have some news here about some beta version of some API. And there's a question about will there be pwn or reverse engineering? I don't think there will be any pwn or reverse engineering. Um, I think this is just web oriented, uh, this one. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I've never played this. I never looked at it. So I'm just, you know, thinking out loud while trying to do this. Uh, so yeah, exactly. So this torch thing, this is related to, uh, these, uh, all of these flags. So we will not, um, we will not definitely not go into that, uh, in this session, uh, maybe later. Um, so it's not observatory. This is not what it looks like. Um, but let's check this. No, sorry. Let's continue uh, clicking around. So they have some services, right? Uh, so they have different files that you can download. So let's. Uh, copy this 
to our notes. Uh, so you can download files uh, with an ID. And if you notice here, I don't know if you can see it, but these three links, uh, they reference file number one, number three, and number five. Uh, and let's check those file. Uh, I will just assume that they contain, yeah, so this is probably, you know, nothing of interest in these files. Yeah, but what if we try to go to like file number two and file number four and file number six, maybe, maybe number seven, that will give us a 404, I guess maybe eight and so on. Yeah, so we got another three files, um, two, four, six. And let's just copy these as well. And you can see that they are called, um, first of all, there's some like uh, open ODT documents. Um, and that was nothing interesting. I mean, not obviously interesting. And then we have this redacted. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, okay, so just to, First, let's just um, recap quickly what we did. Uh, in this uh, services tab, we had these links to different files and they were uh, referenced uh, by this ID. So I just manually tried to enumerate other IDs uh, that were not referenced here. So yeah, someone pointed out uh, it's an IDOR, uh, like, uh, indirect object reference, right? Insecure direct object reference, yeah. So we can just like manually input the ID of something that we're uh, looking for. And one of those files was this uh, redacted file. And this is a very common thing with PDF uh, files when people do redactions that they just, um, I mean, I'm suspecting that this is what it is, that when they're doing these redaction, redactions, they are just placing like a, an object on top of the text, but the text is actually uh, still there and you can just uh, extract it. So there are a few ways to handle this. Uh, one way is to use, oh, didn't I? Um, so this, to a, like a Ruby collection of scripts called the origami, which contains this PDF extract tool, which will just like disassemble it uh, into a bunch of files. And you can check the, this, um, uh, this data and uh, should probably find it somewhere. And we can just explore uh, the data that's in here. Uh, so sometimes it's very easily readable, sometimes it's not. Uh, you could go this way. Um, uh, another easy way is to use, well, and then I need another, uh, a better PDF viewer. Uh, so what you can do is just maybe just like try to select all the text. I think this PDF viewer is absolutely garbage so that you can't actually uh, just select the uh, text. Um, so do I have... I do have another PDF viewer installed and yeah, so 
typically what you can do is just gonna select all of this text what's this uh what's this popular pdf reader called like uh what do people use foxit is the one like so let's just get something uh, People are suggesting events or ocular. Yeah. Yeah, let's get events. Oh, also, uh, it was suggested to open it, just open it in Chrome. Yes, that's also another another suggestion. So let's open this in uh, events. Yeah, and here we can select the text. So you see here that this black box here is just something that they have put uh, over uh, the text. So you can do this and the flag is uh, revealed. So just copy this part into a um, notes file and we paste this here. And which flag was this? This was redacted. Um, so flag nine was we get this file and just and we get the text okay cool uh, very common thing um, we actually had this issue uh, at work uh, with um, some uh, invoices that we were going to archive so we had to go back and, and sort this out uh, so closing down a few things uh, so yeah, so there's a, there is a, a a ton of tools you can use. This uh, this was suggested to use the LibreOffice Draw. Uh, you can also open it in this um, some like uh, vector uh, manipulation uh, program as well. So yeah, that's the um, this page. Let's move on here to uh, the contact page. We have an email here. Uh, we have emails to people at the company and we also have like a read more about this person and Uh, there's a quote here, uh, looky looky, it means uh, look more carefully. So could there be something on the screen here? That would actually be pretty funny if, if it was. Um, yeah, I want to check that out. Uh, where's this image? So... Yeah, so you can see that this is like a very low resolution. And this image is called like thomassmall.png. So we could try with large. Oh, look, that works. Um, and you can see here that uh, it looks like this, it says like summer 19 could be could be a password um, I guess the contents of his screen is still not quite readable uh, but it's still interesting let's let's take this to 
uh, our notes. Let's check if there's like actually like could it be like a, a huge one? No. Let me. Nah. Okay. Or just like without the suffix. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's uh, let's leave that for now and try to move on and check things. So he also he has an email. Let's uh, copy that one. Um, so. And they also have this about page about cookies. Um, trying to see if I actually clicked on all the pages that are like directly visible. Um, okay. So uh, there's also here on this API thing, uh, they said I can, you can be part and, and try the, the beta version of their open API. Contact us through an, a way of contact for more information about how to get it. Maybe we're supposed to send, send him an email. Um, I don't know. Uh, could be. Uh, so let's, you know, take a step back again. Look at our uh, notes again. Uh, we have the the sitemap. We haven't checked. So here, uh, this was actually a horrible rendering of this. Yeah. Okay. So you can see here that we have a bunch of URLs. Uh, so let's take all of those. Um, and save and let's just check that we've gone through all of them. Uh, we looked at the, the first one. Uh, let's close this down. This one we looked at. The about us page we looked at, but this about the website, I don't think we'd looked at this one. Okay, that's a 404, interesting. And then there is the about cookies page, which, which we did look at. And then you have this international, which I don't think uh, we looked at. And it says uh, access denied. Uh, contents of this page is only accessible in the following regions, North America, South America, Asia, uh, Oceania. Um, so we could try to go through some proxy. We could just do like the, 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 the poor man's way of doing this. Just like, let's bring up the tour browser and just see if, or maybe are we supposed to set? No, I think still, I still think that's a good idea. So I can just check where this exit node is. Uh, and then we can just like reconnect and get another, uh, get another node. Um, yeah, so we are connecting from Switzerland right now. So let's, uh, Or maybe we can just actually click directly from here to get a yeah new identity. Wait, can we? Is there like an easy way of specifying this? New tour circuit for this site. All right. I should. Yeah, look. So we got lucky and got something that was in one of these. Um, regions. So here is another uh, flag. So just to, to recap there, um, 
I went into this international page. It says it was only available through some regions. So I brought up the Tor browser, which will route my traffic through some exit node somewhere in the world. Uh, at my first try, I was connected through an exit node in Switzerland, which didn't help. So I just like retried to get another random exit node and uh, this one was good enough. So that worked. If you want to be a little bit more rigorous about that, you could of course like uh, get yourself a server in one of these regions, like through AWS or whatever uh, cloud provider you want and or like if you have a VPN provider or whatever and just connect through that. But this was like a faster and simpler way of doing it. And this was the Globetrotter uh, flag. So let's go into flag five. Um, and that was found here. Use international VPN, for example. Great. So uh, let's close the Tor browser. Let's close this. Um, let's go back to the um, list here. This one lists uh, CWE209. Let's Google this. Uh, generation of error message containing sensitive information. Right, so this is a very common uh, problem when you have like an exception or something containing um, uh, containing sensitive information. So uh, let me just close a few things down. We can close this, we can close that. Actually, we can copy this into our notes um, about tools to use. So what errors have we found so far? We have found like a 404 error. So could there be something there? Uh, let's bring up a, like a 404 page again. Could I just do something like this? Uh, could we check a, uh, like check the headers for a 404 page? Um, doesn't seem to be anything. Another thing I guess we could do is the uh, um, those files that we were looking at. What happens if we give give this something that's not the number? Oh. Okay, so we get some kind of redirection. Actually, I want to check. I want to look closer at that. So. Bring up the network log. Um, so when uh, when we try this, we get a redirect to the not found page. And then we have the not found page, which doesn't seem to contain anything specific. Okay. Could we, you know, provoke an error in a different way? What happens if we do some, oh, there was a file zero that I didn't check for before. Okay, cool. Um, So what if it could be like a file minus one? Also just not found. Oh, okay. Could we try like a really large number? Nope. Um, uh, so let's check the other uh, uh, paths that we had here. So could we go to this? All right. 
So when we tried this admin thing, we did get a, an error saying like a potentially dangerous request. Now, is there a flag here somewhere? Like in a header or... Oh, right. Uh, Okay, so it's it's like a, a JSON object, but it only renders a little bit of it. But anyway, uh, interesting. Anyway, we have the flag here. So that's interesting. Let's submit that. This was the error thing. So let's put this in flag. Flag six, uh, and this was trying to visit this admin page. So it's like uh, robot.txt to this page, and then in the error JSON object, we have the flag. Uh, okay, so what's the next hint? Now tell me your real source. Yeah, so if we look again at the uh, robots.txt file, we have this thing where it uh, this allows like .php and .phps. So .phps is um, I think kind of outdated file extension for like PHP source code, and I don't. I don't really think this is something you really see in real life anymore. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, um, but anyway, it's like a common thing, at least in CTFs. Like sometimes if you have like a .php file, you can have the corresponding .phps file where you would find the source code. I'm pretty sure uh, this is no longer a thing. Uh, but it's still something to keep uh, keep an eye uh, out for. Um, so, a um, uh, there was a question here. Just started to look at the page. Do you want hints if you get stuck, or want to find everything on your own? Uh, so, I think. Uh, if I get very stuck, it might be interesting to, to, to get some hint. But part of the, you know, the idea of this stream is to kind of like not only show the solutions to things, but to show like the process and like what things I would look at and, and so on. So just don't just like drop the answer uh, in the chat uh, because that kind of like, you know, ruins the whole point of this. Uh, you know, if you want to just have like a list of solutions, there are, you can just have like a simple write up that would just you know tell me tell you basically uh someone could just give you like you know the contents of this like you know just check here for that flag go here to this flag the interesting part here isn't where the flag is it's like how how do we come to that uh conclusion so uh so based on this and um We should we could look for this uh, source. So, first of all, could we just check is there like an index.php file? Uh, oh, so that was also a potentially dangerous request. Is there, um, is there like a PHP S file here as well? Oh right, it, it there is. Um, so. Um, yeah, so we get this PHPS file and this is interesting. So this is supposed to emulate some kind of, um, like web application firewall or something. And in a few parts here. So yeah, let's, let's look further into this, uh, later. First of all, let's, let's submit the flag. That was the this one, um, 
And other things to look here for is these includes. So let's just check if we could. Hmm. Maybe we are not able to directly see them. Anyway, uh, it's a good it's a good thing to keep in mind. So let's let's keep that in our notes. Uh, um. Yes. So let's go back at the hints, and here it says uh, Iodor, and. Actually, I realized now that I didn't actually look at this file zero that we downloaded. Uh, hmm. But it doesn't seem to contain anything of interest. So I, I am, I am of the impression that since this is it follows some kind of logical path here, that there was something. Uh, Okay, but it's on the in the category of like error and uh, authorization. Um, so some kind of either. I'm wondering, is it just that I missed something in one of these files, or uh, is there another either? Uh, let me just check. Hmm. So Uh, let's close this down. Um, wait, this is also something I didn't see before. Uh, Let me pull this into our notes again. So it says something about like template not found and also template flag backup. Oh, let's copy it from here instead. So if we visit this URL, right. So Basically, this website is using kind of like a, it has this very common thing when you have websites with some PHP that you have like a common component, which is like a, the top and the bottom of the page. And then you have small chunks of like pages that you combine. And then for some reason here, it lists all the different templates in this JSON object. And you have a bunch of different ones, including the backup flag. Um, so, uh, oh, I forgot to, right. I forgot to add this to our flags list. So in this thing here, we notice the PHP sourcing and we look for this and let me just bring that up again and we get this flag. Okay. So again, we take the, um, error message and in the error message, we notice this backup flag thing. And if we go to that page, we get this one. So 
Um, we can submit this. Cool. So now we're kind of, we caught up with, you know, the order of things. Uh, let's close down a few tabs. Um, so if we kind of like think of this as like, you know, branching out and like in this like graph and, and, you know, looking at things we haven't looked yet, um, we have, first of all, all of the other of those templates in this uh, in this uh, thing I just want to double check uh, that we didn't miss anything um so let's just check what we have here uh so for example I don't think we have seen this page. I don't think we have seen this page either. Uh, so those could be interesting to look at because let's let's just confirm that this was the page with Thomas. Exactly. Uh, and then let's check this template with Eric instead. Oh, okay, uh, it doesn't really contain anything, but what about this administration template thing? Um, so, here, seems to be some kind of username and password thing um, and some status thing this could be interesting if there would be some like template injection or whatever uh, although uh, the the rules or whatever kind of suggested that there wouldn't be um, so let's actually check when we act what is it that causes these things? So these are the conditions for, first of all, I'm going to put these in the notes and then these are the conditions for, uh, let's see if any of these are matched then we have this error so basically these three or sorry these four together they're just making sure that uh there is a parameter called page that this parameter is a string and that this string is inside this um array uh, of valid templates and finally that that template actually exists so um, uh, yeah that, that that's what what this whole uh, thing is saying like we can we can so if any of these things are not fulfilled we have an error and then here there is like a regex applied to the uh url and let's actually go to like regex 101 to just look at this a little bit so we are saying that
if we match this then we have uh, an error but this is just like a single Uh, is this searching for is this like a full match or is it searching search is the subject for a match okay and this actually matches a whole lot of things or wait why no sorry we have a not expression here so this is inverted um so the allowed characters are uh, like alphanumeric and underscore slash dash question mark and sign equals sign a dot and an at sign. Uh, so uh, quite a lot of things are allowed. Not an exclamation mark though, which is why when we put in um, the exclamation mark admin, that was an error so if we could do just like this we would get an error of course that also gets an error because it doesn't exist but can we go to just slash admin without uh the exclamation mark uh no we can't okay so somehow we want to get into the uh admin stuff but uh let's look at this later um so if it if it wouldn't have checked for this uh, entry in the array we could have like a, a local file inclusion with this and so here it says like if page is administration so maybe that's we should go to all oh, right so using this um row this line in the code we get to the administration page and here we need a, a login so actually we should note this, that down from the uh, uh, Thomas Large thing he had what was it summer 19 I can't exactly make out what it says here it's, it could say like a slash ADM or EDM or EDN like admin or something but this is definitely in Swedish summer 19 so um, could that possibly be the password to the admin page so let's use his username and his password and we have logged in um, so um, that's good. Welcome, Thomas. Uh, just kind of double check that there isn't anything specifically in the source or anything here. Uh, nope. So we have some messages from Steve. Um, first of all, Did we jump like ahead with a lot uh, by a lot? I don't know. Let's continue this road. We've, we found this. I don't really care at the moment which order these things are. So let's start reading the messages. Uh, starting with, they're all sent on the exact same moment, but let's check this one. So uh, here they're talking about HAB legacy service in the access log, trying to log into the old admin panel. Um, I have placed the access log and a TCP dump capture on the F FTP, like usually, uh, if you can check. So, uh, and this is like the email headers and everything. 
So this is all very interesting, of course. Um, and here is some, um, some other recipients as well. Um, yeah, a lot of interesting information here. Uh, so let's note this down. We have this legacy service. Uh, we have some like access log. We have some TCP dumped thing. Um, what could be interesting here? All these recipients could be like interesting like credentials and stuff for some later stage. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Maybe we'll get back. Maybe there's some other piece of information here that is very interesting. Um, okay, here's another email with a flag. And this says like, uh, yeah, everything should be working a thousand percent now. HAB mail reader. Uh, yeah. So let's submit this one. This was like flag 13. Okay, so we're not like, we didn't jump too far uh, ahead. So we have a few other things here uh, that we are, that we missed, but uh, we can we can go back to that uh, later. So um, let's copy these things over to uh, our flag notes here. So we have flag number 13, flag 13, uh, and then we need to mention this um, Thomas Large. So we have two separate things here. We have like Thomas Small to Thomas Large to get his credentials. Then in the source code, we get the URL, we log in, and then um, we can just to read this specific message which will give us the flag great let's check the other emails so they're talking about the Wi-Fi here uh, it's good that you turned off the uh, WPS uh, function for our Wi-Fi uh, there's apparently some kind of vulnerability in that uh, technology but maybe we should uh, switch from WPA to personal to enterprise, or at least change the password from time to time. Uh, check WPA2.tar on the FTP and you'll understand what I mean. So I guess we're gonna do some like um, Wi-Fi cracking um, at some point. All right, the exist there's some FTP somewhere. Um, Cool, then password policy. So here it says like we don't have a strict password policy, so make sure to change your passwords to something um, safe, so something secure. For example, my password is eight characters with both uh, numbers and capital and lowercase uh, letters. Uh, and I, I can see that uh, Thomas has changed his password. So this is good information. We know that um, basically we know that uh, Steve, he has a password, which is uh, numbers, lowercase, uppercase letters, eight characters long. Uh, so this is his the regex for his password. So maybe we'll do something like password cracking or something later. We don't know. Um, other than that, nothing that I can see that's obvious. Um, so did we get like, was there an FTP port open? Yes. So I guess we could we could look at that. Um, and I do kind of want to look at these things. 
to give this another go, but I wonder what that could be. I like I I want to access the uh, the contents of these files. But I guess the problem is that they are they have associated these the dot ink um, file extension with the pop um, processors preprocessors so we can't just um, they will be processed by PHP and therefore it will not just echo out the contents on them uh, so. Yeah, that's an issue. So there was a message from Klaus. Try just yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we already have the uh, uh, admin panel here. Uh, I'm just like going back uh, a little bit because um, we seem to have missed a few flags. But uh, well, let's skip that for now then. So let's check this uh, FTP thing. Do I have like? Like, uh, can I install like FileZilla or something to not have to deal with the command line? I don't really like uh, using FTP from like command line tools, it's always messy. So let's use FileZilla. Uh, let's try to connect to the FTP server because if you see here from the nmap scan we did we saw that the FTP port was open so uh, let's use FileZilla to try to connect to this uh, let's start with not setting any uh, yes okay so we didn't use any of uh, authentication and there seems to be let me just can I like maybe make this the font size interface um, scale factor Okay, that seemed to affect everything except the text. Okay, whatever. Uh, I can just tell you that in the when we connect with FTP without any uh, authentication, we get a directory listing with two directories, employees and pub. So let's check in pub, for example. We have some kind of diagram and WPA2.tar. So let's download both of these. Where did I download them to, by the way? Is it just my... Oh, right. Uh, should switch to here and actually let's create a director here with the uh, idor thing and uh, let's just clean this up move everything that we already have into the idor directory um, and delete this Permission denied. Why is uh, why is this whole thing? All right. Uh, oh no. Okay. Uh, refresh. And then just create another one with FTP. And we download these and in employees, we fail to retrieve the directory listing. Okay, um, that's fine for now. Let's actually, let's disconnect and try to connect with the, uh, the username and password that we had for Thomas, let's, um, so, oh, now, now we can connect. So we use the same uh, 
credentials as we did for the uh, the admin panel. So we have some captures, we have some logs, we have some repos. Yeah, this is good stuff. Uh, so we can just download. We just download all of this. Um, So actually we should put this in notes. Uh, so FTP on this site and we use uh, this thing for him and then we can like download stuff. Um, so these were called pub and WPA and we put that into pub. So where do we want to start? Um, first of all, let's check repos. We can unpack this. Is this like the whole thing? Did we get like the source code for Oh, this is for the, right, this is for the bug bounty. Um, subdomain. Hmm. So, could there be things in here? We could do a, just a search for the flag in this whole uh, doesn't look like it this is just the example flag right so what's in the docker file mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is not relevant at the moment. Yeah, let's let's leave this for now. Let's check um, the logs. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, so this is a, an access log, web access log for this api.hackab.sc. By the way, I haven't checked that subdomain out at all. Oh, okay, so here is the... Uh, the API. Uh, that's good to know. So let's put this in the notes as well. And from this access log, I mean, you see most of this is, you know, nothing special, but this one sticks out a lot because here we have an access token. Uh, so it looks like this is a JWT token. And that's nice. Hopefully we can use it to access uh, the API. Um, so I guess we are supposed to use this like interact with this a little bit and, and, and fetch some stuff but I'll leave it for for a moment and before that we'll check the other access log uh, so commentary API was also findable using the HTTPS cert the screenshot of the security scan said rescan HTTPS so I checked the uh, cert and found the H API subdomain there. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's actually uh, 
just show that variant. So I've been using like the HTTP version, but they also have HTTPS. And this is something you can use for information gathering then. Uh, you can look at the certificate and uh, uh, what is it called? Just like here. Oh, so this is always good to look at. And here we actually find something else. So if we check the um, HTTPS uh, version of the site and look at the certificate, we can get all of these alternative names. So this one we already discovered through the uh, access log. These two we knew about. This one is the flag, but this one is new. Can we access it publicly? Uh, it can't be reached. Now, there are two options here. Either they host this on a completely different server, in which case uh, we don't, we wouldn't know how to proceed at the moment. The other possibility is that they are use, using like name-based virtual hosts, but they just haven't published a, uh, a DNS record for this. So what we can do to explore that option, uh, there are a few different ways of doing this. You could use uh, curl and basically go to the IP address and then set the host header uh, manually. So let's try that first. So we will do this and then I think we should be able to just do this. So we set the internal staging and that works. So basically um, they have not published a DNS record for this, but the, uh, um, the web server configuration is still there. And that means that you can make a request to the server and just manually set the host header because it's the host header that determines when you use name-based uh, virtual hosts, it's the host header that will determine which of the websites it will actually uh, serve. Um, so you can, you can do it this way. Um, another way you could do this, if you want to use like multiple tools and, and, and a bunch of stuff to make it very simple is that you could just add this manually to your hosts file. Uh, so we could add an entry here where we say that this IP address uh, or like this domain name points to this IP address. So we can do this and then we can just in the browser go to this because now we, 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 we manually set the DNS name ourselves. Uh, and you can look here then at the actual request that's being made. Uh, refresh so we see here request headers so the host header and this is the important part this is what uh, makes it serve this so let's uh, submit this one and this was uh, number 21 so yeah um, a different flag so let's actually note this down in oh, flag 21 and we'll say that this is we use the HTTPS and then uh, the certificate and then finally uh, we just curl here to get the flag. All right, um, so let's close that down. Um, yes, it was suggested try to add the subdomain to the DTC hosts uh, and curl it. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, um, 
this is what I did in the browser here when it showed up, but we could also use uh, a curl again and just do this. So you can do it manually like I did here, or if you add it to the host file like I did, you can just curl uh, like this. Uh, you can even use HTTPS if you want, or uh, regular HTTP. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that. Um, let's. So what were we doing? Yeah, we were checking the access logs. That's uh, let's go back to this then. Uh, we found this access token, which we can probably use. Uh, um, with the API, but let's check this other access log. So here it's making some kind of post request to the admin page. And this is the name of the user agent, like HAB legacy service 0.1 AES 1.8 SHA. Um, so, I mean, we don't know what that is, but it seems interesting. Let's note that down. So I th think that's, I mean, there isn't really any other interesting information in this log. And I think we exhausted the interesting information in this log as well. So let's close that down for the moment and go back and check the captures. So here is the uh, PCAP uh, with this um, uh, the legacy service. So let's open that in Wireshark. And I'm going to see if I can get like a larger text here. Yeah, maybe uh, even a even larger 16 yeah maybe that's better uh tell me if i if you want me to increase the uh font size even more so here we can see a bunch of https um requests to the uh, uh to the server and um i mean this is https so it's encrypted uh, we can look at the different streams here but this will all be encrypted traffic um so it doesn't really help us um The only way we could get something out from this is if we uh, had, uh, if we were able to crack this um, um, the crack the encryption. So, um, and we. At the moment, we don't have anything uh, indicating that. But actually, we should probably now, now should, would probably be a good uh, time to check um, how good the uh, HTTPS setup actually is, if we actually might have to crack it. So let's run a uh, SSL Labs uh, scan on this. I mean, it might turn out that there are some really poor configurations here. Um, and uh, that could give us some way of uh, breaking it. Um, 
So let's let this run. Uh, let's close down Wireshark in the meanwhile. Um, and we can actually close down the FileZilla program as well. So yeah, so maybe let's take a look at the API then again. So this is the API documentation. So we can Uh, there was a comment that the rating was B and nothing major that I saw. Okay, cool. Great, uh, Eric. Yeah, I will just let it run in the background and see. Um, so uh, we have these endpoints. We have the services where we can list services. Requires no uh, authentication. Um, and then we can look at the specific uh, service. Also, no authentication required. Um, here we need a, we can get a list of uh, employees where we need some kind of authentication uh, with a, like a bearer like this. Uh, again, we can get the information about specific employee. Here we can log in and we can get an access token. And the example, they log in with guest and password guest, guest to get the token. Um, we can also list all the different endpoints here. So, well, let's uh, check this one at a time. So let's make a completely separate file for this with just the uh, API, because I guess there will be a lot of stuff just copying. Um, so we could, and then look at these services. So let's start with the best, the okay one, the better one, and the good one. So, yeah, this is what was shown on the on this uh, other page. Uh, doesn't seem to contain anything interesting. We see that there was a fourth entry, the OK service, and it's listed as available false and no link. And also we have some metadata here showing a total of four different services, and we saw all the four different services. So, yeah, that's uh, that's all good. So we have these requests, but there's nothing, nothing of interest really. Uh, this one is then is what we checked. Um, so we can get a list of employees, but we need uh, some authorization. Let's try to use this to log in then. So we do another curl request to this thing, data, and let's just put this in the body. Uh, do we need to maybe set the header, content type, application, JSON? Yeah, that works. So this gives us a token. Then we can use this token to get these other things. But first, let's retrieve the list of endpoints because that doesn't require any uh, authentication. So five different, let's just copy all of this into the text editor. Um, so it says that we have the services, the login, the employees, the endpoints and the customers. And that's interesting because I didn't see a customers here in the uh, documentation. So that's something to keep in mind, but let's take these things one at a time. Um, let's try to get this list of employees then with the, uh, uh, 
with this curl command. So we curl to this address, we set the authorization header to be this really long token that we got. Um, and that should be it. Oh, sorry, we need to put, I put it in the wrong format. It should be like this. Right, so that works. So let's just quickly enumerate these people. So we have uh, Jesper, Thomas, Kathleen, Miriam, Tobias. And I'm just looking if there's anything of interest here. We have some like user ID, which could be interesting. I'm just gonna copy all of this when I'm done. Steve. Uh, Jürgen. Okay, um, you know, nothing that sticks out, but you know, let's just copy all of this anyway. So now let's try the uh, the customers thing. So first of all, we try without any header. Customers, insufficient privileges. So let's add this header then. Still insufficient privileges. So what if this token that we had over here, what if we can use that one? It seems to have the same format, right? So, um, so my face is blocking the view on the right half of the commands. Ooh, okay. Um, that's maybe I should just do oh. Oh. I'll do this. Now it should be all good. Uh, so, we have this key that uh, someone says use, use stilts. Uh, can you please clarify that? Or if it's like a joke or if it's an actual tool or something, it sounds like a good idea. Um, so, we tried this token that was stole from the access log. Right, so here is a long list of customers and we should have probably revoked this token or at least expired it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So let's submit this, which was accepted and it's this one. So we get this whole thing and this was flag 22. And we get this stuff. Um, right. So, um, 
now we are a little bit more scattered oh i just noticed this one it says git good so <laughs> maybe they forgot to like did they put the git repository here or what is it called it's called index with a capital um I'm thinking that they did that they left like uh where is it uh let me just check a random git repository something yeah exactly so index on head should in that case should exist so no it doesn't seem to be just a straight up uh that they left the git repository in the in the root Um, wait, why is it? Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not messing this up. Oh, okay. There was some something messy with the with the redirect here. That was why. But this was the four hundred four page, right? Yeah. I always try just head. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I usually do as well. Uh, but no, that didn't seem to be the case uh, here. But maybe actually in the, what about the staging? Uh, staging thing. Uh, nope, doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, yeah, but there's something about Git somewhere. So, uh, good to keep in mind. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so, um, should we check all of these customers as well? Yes, I think we should. Uh, but this time I'm not gonna do it manually because there were uh, quite a few of them. So let's script this. So uh, API dump um, Oh, there's a question. Try surfing to just the IP of the web page. Okay, spoilers, but yeah, that's actually while we're talking about like name based hosting, I should have actually tried this as well, of course. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, 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 that was a bit stupid of me. Uh, I should have, I mean, I was talking a lot about like how the host host header is irrelevant and all of that. So of course you should always try just the plain IP address as well. Um, that's, uh, quite an obvious one. I guess that also makes sense with the, it works, uh, flag. Uh, but no, no more straight up spoilers. That's that ruins the point of this. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, dump the customers. Um, so let's script this up. So, um, where is the API .txt? So. This is the base URL, we import request. So this is also very good, like you know some, some Python to be able to script uh, these things. So where is this 
token that we have stolen uh, token and then we can do re requests get the base url slash customers uh, we can set a header and we set the authorization header and we set it to this uh, bearer and then the token and we get the response and we can try to run this uh oh i have a typo right so now we should do um so customers in this So yeah, Eric says, will it be the best regards from Ablu at UPB hack? Yeah. Oh, nice. Hello, UPB hack. Uh, thanks for Midnight Sun. Yeah. Um, you're welcome. I will actually not continue for that much longer. I think that I will just do this next flag and then that's it for uh, this time. Actually, I, I want to go and have dinner. Um, but uh, it's been a lot of progress here. So let's just start with this uh, so we dump all the customers like this and then we looked at the let's go back in this api uh, when we looked at the endpoints uh, there was a sub resource so probably we should be able to just like stick this on at the end and dump that so Uh, we'll make another request with almost the same thing, but we will add the customer at the end. And let me just print that once and break to just make sure that it works. Right. And here we have oh we have usernames credit card numbers passwords all the good stuff um so let's just run this uh first of all let's skip the meta part and just pick out the items object and um, I'm just gonna quickly scroll and see if I see anything obvious but I uh, should probably just dump this to like a, we could dump this to a CSV file, for example, uh, to have all of this nice and easy. Um, so let's um, let's do this to get it slightly more readable. Uh, customer data because this is one object and then we could do just just print all the oh why did that happen
So here there was some kind of issue. Why is that? Oh, okay, this this is because the credit card number is none. All right, um, so we could just do yeah, and then we could dump this to like customer data txt, and we can open this up, turn off the. Oh, we should skip this one, Re redo that. Yeah, and now we have it a little more structured way. Uh, I'm not sure, like, Thomas says, perhaps this is a red herring call. Uh, yeah, that might be the case. Yeah, I'm actually thinking that, uh, you know, the, the only thing I would have, you know, looked into more is like all of these people just try to see if like this is anything. But other than that, I think we'll just skip this. Yeah, okay. Well, we dumped some data at least. Uh, okay, so I said that I wanted to get one more flag before stopping. Um, uh, uh, uh. Here it says something about close but no cigar when we log in. What if we log in when we did log into the admin page? We never tried to administration. Uh, what happens if we just put in some incorrect data? So login failed. We should probably check like the headers and stuff on that. Oh, this is interesting. We have a cookie which says that our role is user. I didn't notice this before. What if we change that to uh, sorry, we go here, cookies user change it like admin reload oh admin administrator no Why is this? When is this set, by the way? Let's delete all of this. And just try. Hmm. When, when were those set? So let's actually try again to log in with uh, the, the Thomas account. And 
let's check network. We clear out this. We log in. Administration. Response cookies. All right. So what if we change this now to admin? It changes back to user, it seems. Could we change this user ID? So what if this Steve guy is an admin? So he has this user ID and he's maybe an admin. Okay, uh, that worked. So what we did was that we uh, we stole the we we managed to fetch the user ID uh, of Steve through the API. Maybe there's another way to get it as well. And um, that meant that we could manually set the hub UID and hub role to admin. I don't know if maybe it was enough to just change the UID. Um, but anyway, one or both of those and we get a flag. Which flag did we get? We got a rollback. So that stands for like role based access control, right? I think it stands for role based access control. Um, cool. Uh, so I'm gonna finish it up here, but I'm gonna check if there is. No, wait, maybe the user ID part didn't work because it still thinks that we are. So why didn't that work? Okay, I'm a little bit confused now what part of that actually made it work. The, the, the. Hmm. Anyway, um, so it did work with changing the role and yeah maybe it was something about the chrome cookie menu i've had problems with that before but let, let's let's actually let's try to redo it completely and just see which part it was so we are here we log in again with so maybe the the the, the, the api thing didn't have anything to do with it. it was maybe it was just uh the chrome part that was stupid so we log in again We get this, we change this to admin. All right, okay. So it had nothing to do with the user ID. Uh, so let's scrap that whole part and nothing about the user ID. It was just the uh, role. And it was like 14. So we put it here. Um, so yeah, so with that, I think, uh, I'm going to wrap this up for today. So we sold a bunch of, uh, flags and there is roughly like half of them left on this web part. And then there's this, uh, VM thing that you can download. So, um. Uh, yeah, it's, um, do we have any like questions or comments or anything from the chat? Um, otherwise, I don't, otherwise this is it for today. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. I will try to do a few more of these uh, streams occasionally and 
if you have other suggestions later on other challenges to look at that you think would be um, useful, uh, you can you can suggest them. But please note that I will not I will not solve anything on stream that is part of like an ongoing competition or uh, like a recruitment challenge or anything like that. So I will only solve things which, um, you know, which are okay to like spoil. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for today and thanks for listening. Have a nice uh, day or evening or whatever time it is where you're watching from. Goodbye.